We're learning life, embracing love, managing marriage, maneuvering in ministry, and managing money. Welcome to the Let's Talk About It podcast. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good day, whatever time it is that you're listening or you're watching online. Welcome to the Let's Talk About It podcast, Um, where we talk about life, love, marriage, ministry, and money. And today we're talking about life and I guess you can say marriage and money all in one. Three, uh, where we're talking about that. So I have my honey dip, and so many have been asking us. So we're gonna deep dive because we got a lot to share. This may be a two part thing, but I wanted to share this with you for those that have been asking. You know, where did it start? What's the full story? We have never given the full story and journey. Uh, of we've given the full story of our marriage, the first 12 years of our marriage, uh, which we've been married now come this year, 23 years, but we've shared the first 12 years of our marriage. We've given you, so go get that book, shameless book, marriage survival guide, check it out. But we've never shared the journey of our turbulence moment. Uh, and this is titled from turbulence to trusting God's plan and doing things God way. Um, and we learned that throughout experiences. I shared Sunday uh, with our church, you know, the importance of receipts. And this is us sharing receipts and the blessings of God and bragging on the things that God has done throughout our life. But most of all, I mean, how we didn't listen and how we messed up and how we made mistakes. So I said, what better way to talk about this conversation with the person that has been on the journey with me, which is my baby daddy, my boyfriend, my all that, and a bag of apples, my honey dip, husband. Say what's up to the podcast family. Hey, everyone out there. I thank God that uh, you were able to chime in and and um, connect with us this morning or whatever time you listen to this podcast. I'm just glad we were able to connect with you. And yeah, my wife, like my wife saying that, we've been through a journey. Um, you know, for those who don't know, before we tell you where we come from, I kind of tell you a kind of a little bit about where we are. You know, um, God has blessed us to be, you know, in a place of of trusting God. We trust God so much right now, and He has gifted us with so many different things. We'll talk about that along the way. You know what He's trusted us with, um, but it, it's because we took the journey He put us on. So, um, for those who don't know, I'm Clyde Harden, um, the husband of Tanya Harden. And um, I'm in love with her and I'm in love with doing life with her. Yes. And the father of our three beautiful jo- daughters. Oh, yeah. We forget about them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. Baby, if y'all listen, we don't forget about y'all. But um, to kind of share, just kind of let's start off where we I want to start off this because like Bishop said, my husband said uh, we are at a place where God, we have seen the hand of God. We've seen the manifestation. He shared something that this morning with me, a scripture that just let us know that we were just in the vein and the lane that God wants us in, in this season. And it took us a while to get here. Go ahead, husband. I'm kind of doing like a, a fast pace because if someone listening, why would I listen to it? I'm tell you like what, what happened. So it's real quick, a little quick synopsis. Back in 20, I think it was, uh, when did it all start? Your, baby, what year did it start? Back in 2018? 2018, picture us. 2018, um, losing everything. I mean, losing everything. Are you talking about the first time or the second time? Well, okay, so let's talk about the second, second time. Second time, okay. The time we lost, we, we, well, we, we transitioned. We transitioned. Um, mm-hmm. And we transitioned with, you know, a job. And, you know, not really, um, it's kind of hard to start it. You know, I'm just going to just jump into it. I, I kind of because I want to talk about in the fact that we were at a place to where you know we 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 walked out of everything. We walked out of a home. We walked out of a you know situation, and we ended up. Let's just take the journey. I want to tell it so many ways because it's kind of hard to talk about 2018 when I talking about back whenever we lost everything. Exactly. <laughs> That and I, I think it's very important to go all the way back to 20, I want to say it was 2013, 2012, 
um, when we were living in a house that we had been in for 13 years, almost 12, 13 years. And living in this house that we built with our family, our kids wrote on the wall. Our, uh, they had their, you know, the size. We did the whole picket, white picket fence thing with the children in the house to where uh, they their rooms, room was a certain color that they wanted. We painted it several times because of being there. And, and in this home, this is what we built with all of our girls together. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, because of life, lifing <laughs> life started lifing uh to the point to where we our air conditioner went out our our something else went out and so we got behind on bills and we're pastoring a church at the same time and so in that uh i i heard the lord say okay it's time to move we need to move into another house and of course you know we went in agreement here's the thing when it comes to being married both of you have to be in re agreement regardless of what the lord has said yeah. and so we were at a point to where we you you didn't agree and i'm like i think it's time to move and and i feel the lord saying this you know but at the time we both didn't know where to go what to do how we were going to do it we've been there we had planted our life in this house and we didn't know how to uproot out of that. Well, God made a way. He, he made it to where, okay, since you're not going to root, let me allow everything to hit you to where my husband works at an amazing job, General uh, GE, um, uh, General Electric, amazing job. Nothing wrong with that. But I was at home. We, I think I was working at the time. And it just wasn't happening. We could not come out of this hole of bills that were piling on top of us. So- right. now, Go ahead. Yeah, just to throw in there just a little bit because, you know, for that person listening, um, you know, we want to make sure we highlight one thing to you. There's been one verse that has been our anthem from 2013 to 2015 to 2018 to 2020 to 2023. There's been one verse that's been our anthem that has helped us through everything. We want you to understand this. Now, one verse is Romans 8 and 28. Everything works together for the good mm -hmm. of the Lord who has been called according to his purpose. And that's so relevant because, you know, we, we always do what we call a uh, self-check. You know, did we do anything wrong? Did we, did yes. we throw this what they got? Are we perfect? No. But if who we are got us here, the only thing that should take us backwards is going back to who we, doing what we did before. And we knew we didn't go backwards. We didn't do anything wrong. So that means we qualify for almost 8 and This must be for our good. So not every bad thing happened to you is for bad reasons. You know, we lost a home, a full house. We two lost story. <clears throat> two story. Yeah. We lost the car. We lost our dream. Yeah. <laughs> our dream was, was a two story house with two cars, uh, with a family. Um, you know, we lost our dream. Um, we kept our family, but we lost our dream. Um, mm -hmm. And we had we come we can, became homeless. You know, so this this didn't happen because we were disobedient. God was literally pushing us. Um, to our next level, but we didn't understand that, but we did trust him. Yeah. Well, that was, we, we didn't fight him. Well, yes, we did. We fought him. We, we, we did what the typical person would do. As I talked about Gideon, we did the, okay, wait a minute, Lord. Like, are you sure this is what we're supposed to do? And we waited too long. We yeah. missed the opportunity. Uh, we should have moved when God said move, but evidently God didn't want that to happen because we needed to learn the lesson in it so that we could be prepared for the next time it came around. And so with that time, I will say our church was booming. Uh, oh, I don't know how many behinds in the seat. Uh, it was the church was amazing, but we were failing Publicly, we look like a success. Probably but privately, so. we were failing. We were melting. We were, uh, and when I say failing, meaning that we weren't <clears> creating <throat> opportunities for our children. We were just making the wrong decisions and we should have made better decisions. And if you're listening to me and you're out there and you're saying that I know what that's like, you understand exactly what we're talking about. But to understand what we're talking about, we also want to talk to that person to understand, too, how we said the next go round. You know how you get in some babe, and you say, I'm not going to this is not going to happen no more. Like, I'm not going through this no more. We had to live at the church. We hid our car in the back of the church. Some people have heard the testimony, but you're going to get more in this podcast than you ever got. Yeah. But hit our car and was embarrassed with shame uh, because, yes, we could have went to stay with somebody else, but we chose to live at the church to make our family comfortable. Well, and thank God we had somewhere to stay. Let me add this part because 
I hope women, if you're listening to this alone, uh, like I said, it's going to be a journey. So get your husband because uh, we're going to drop a lot of nuggets that's going to help your marriage, gonna help your ministry, help your business. Uh, but this is going to be a, a marriage piece right here. I'm calling it a marriage nugget. Is that so my wife, like she said, she had the, the she felt God sent us to move and I didn't. Now she could have said, I'm going to leave him because he's not seeing vision. Mm-hmm. No, I, I wasn't cheating. I wasn't abusing her. I just didn't see what she saw. And so even though she was frustrated, she was financially frustrated. She was uh, frustrated with, with me not, you know, progressing. Um, but she stayed in there with me until I saw it. Mm-hmm. So the move didn't happen until she saw it. Then finally I saw it. And when I saw it, it was more like God kicking us out. But she had to hang in there. So she didn't just abandon me because I didn't see the vision for every woman out there. Who, uh, who say, you know, I'm so frustrated with my husband. If he's if he is, you know, at least doing his due diligence to be the best man he can, and he just can't see the man that you're that you tell him he can be, don't Come don't wait for another man. Hang in there because if you trust God, God will eventually reposition him and you. You just gotta yeah. hang in there and keep saying over and over again what God is showing you, what God is showing you. Uh, it will eventually happen. So she did see it maybe a year before I even even wanted to move, and I still didn't want to move because mm-hmm. family was in a comfortable position. But go ahead, sweetheart. And I had to continue to share the dream. I had to continue to share what God was showing me. And even when things happened in the house, I did my best not to bring it up. Okay. You know, you know what God said. It was just one of those. I probably did it a couple of times, though. Yeah. Probably did. Because we, we was life in together. We was life in it. Yeah, was, we was yeah. life in it. So now you get us to where we you know we have to at this point, our house is about to be in a foreclosure. It is time we got to move out you know we don't want we could have stayed there we could have fought it you know some people would say well just stay there because they can't kick y'all out no 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 we felt like we were stealing we don't want to stay in this house and at this point and we were even told by a relative like wait like just stay there y'all you know until you can find no 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 we left we just wanted to let loot just whatever it was done it was over with we lost our car everything not lost but we had a repo on the car and that was my first repo ever in life. So it was just a transition of turbulence, of trials, of tribulation that we could take full responsibility and accountability for, as well as knowing that God allowed it. And can for I, us to learn. Mm-hmm. I look at two almost like listen to me, that we were in a caterpillar mode. That was our caterpillar mode. Mm, okay. And yeah. caterpillars can be comfortable crawling until God ready for you to fly. Mm. And so we were we were crawling and, and and we didn't want to get rid of our legs. We didn't want to get rid of our, you know, uh, skelly back, whatever. This caterpillar, but, but God started snatching it from us and he put yeah. us in our cocoon. And and so you may be in a caterpillar moment. You, you may not realize that God is trying to you may be losing stuff. You may be going through. If you didn't do anything wrong, remember that. I'm going to keep bringing it up over and over again, Romans 8 and 28. If you didn't do anything wrong, that means you qualify for uh, what God is, you, everything works together for your good. And so literally, God snatched the house, God snatched the car, God snatched our reputation, our <laughs> Come on. credit score. God snatched all that. All that. And now he, and I never forget in this journey, I, I'm not believing, my wife is believing, my wife was raised more spiritual than I was. We both raised in church. Wife was raised more spiritual, and in my religion relationship, with God, I believe what I saw. I didn't believe what I didn't see, mm-hmm. and so for the first time, I'm driving back and forth between uh, maybe for those who don't know this proximity, but between Kingwood and Conroe, um, it's about a uh, about an hour drive to work every day. And there's this house. I won't. I'll spare you a lot of details, but it's one house that we looked for. God touched my heart and said, "Go back to the house." I didn't even tell my wife because I didn't want to get her hopes up. And I started believing that house was ours. It was a rental home. We was owning the house we was in. That was a rental home. And I was driving and God says, pull into your home. So every day I would literally drive from Conroe, uh, get halfway to Kingwood, pull into this house. They had no one there because I knew we wanted it, but we we literally got denied. They denied us. That yes. moment, I don't give me all that. But I pulled into my house like I was pulling out of it, heading to work. So I pull in there, park, and then I <laughs> back out like I was heading to work. Come on, your faith with that works is dead. <laughs> <laughs> this is not me, but God is starting to deal with me. Wife, watch yeah. this. Your husband, God got to deal with him because he got to know that he's trusting the voice. And so I didn't tell my wife. So then I back out and head to work. And then I get off of work and I drive to the house 
park it for a second, like I was coming home, and then I back out and then head to my other home. I believe that house is ours. And until God one day, the lady called me up and said, hey, do y'all still want this house? And, and I'm like, uh, yeah. She said, well, I saw the paperwork and, and da, 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 long story behind this. But God opened that door. But that's why I had to share. So we went through so much turbulence in that in that moment, losing everything. And even um, we went homeless. Talk about it, baby. I had to talk about that moment of transition. Yeah. No, I'm I'm glad you brought up that moment because here's the thing is that even though we're we're living in this house, by this time my faith was depleted because I didn't know where we were gonna go. And not realizing that your faith had been God had been dealing with you on your faith. Cause at this moment, I don't see how we're gonna come out. I don't see, you know, this is the time that my kidneys started bothering me. I just I'm just like it's too much going on around here, right? Yeah. So I think that's very important that you the somebody has to have some kind of faith within the house or somebody if it's if you're not married have someone that can believe with you yeah. and you started believing for us and here's the thing it didn't make sense to me because the amount of money that we were paying for the house that we were living in come on make that make sense yeah, the yeah. amount of money we were paying for the yeah. house that we were living in we mm -hmm. paid six hundred dollars a month. And, and make it make sense. We couldn't pay because somebody. the Obama, the Obama thing. Yeah, Obama made it to where veterans could get a half off their house note. And my house note was twelve hundred. When he hit the house note, my house note went down to six hundred dollars a month, and we couldn't make it because God says you no longer, you no longer belong here. No what longer. When God said you no longer belong belong in the dream you dreamed for. Come on. Because he I, got bigger dreams for you. I love it, I, and I think about this, Bishop. It's like when you were talking about the butterfly thing. And and now after that, fast forward years later, I have a whole Butterfly Academy mentorship. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like God had to go and I and I teach women how to come out of ruts to go through the experience of the caterpillar and the, you know, whatever. But it's like everything happens for a reason. We don't know why. I'm, I'm confused on one thing. I remember we was homeless and I remember Uncle Ray and my dad coming to pick our stuff up from the house and moving us into the new house. Mm -hmm. Did we leave our stuff in the house and we moved into the church? I can't remember the homeless stage. Yeah, we left our stuff in the house. We didn't. We stayed at the church. We stayed at the church for a couple of weeks, though, until because we didn't feel comfortable Same staying house. at the house, knowing that we wouldn't pay in rent. Gotcha. And so we had them come later and take us. Yes, uh, leave from that, yeah. So we stayed at the church. I think it was a couple of weeks. It wasn't really long. We just let, made the girls think that it was a vacation. Like, girls, we're going to the church. They had no idea. They were they were young then. They had no idea what was going on. And yeah. the next experience, we had that experience with them. So now we're in the house, okay? We're in the house. We're there. We sign a lease. We're going to be here until Kiana. And we said this until Kiana graduates. Oh, look, we can't say the transition. So we, we were we okay. were six hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. uh, we just lost a car. We lost the house. Um, we, we're behind. Oh, wait, Mark. I got to say this. The day we lost the car. Now, this is how God work. The day we lost the car, i never forget my sister. And if she's listening, my sister was going to the hospital. We walk outside. She had never seen us in a repo. repo. People started seeing us in our downfall. We never had a repo. <laughs> huh? Never seen this repo because we never had a repo. <laughs> yeah, she never seen us. Like, and what I mean by that, people never seen us in our downfall. My niece showed up, the lights are off. You know, we had never been in this part of a rut in our life. We've always been the person and the family that people thought we had it together. And God made it to where no, I need them to know y'all are not perfect. You do not have it together. So going to the hospital, trying to figure out how we're gonna get another vehicle. How about? Let, just to fast forward, God bless it to where my credit was good. Had no idea my credit was good. And we were able to get a car the same, the day. same day. And my sister was like, well, what? The same day. She said, God, just keep on blessing y'all. Now, we feel like we're in a mess. But she's saying, God, just keep on. How you get a car the same day? And it was a nice car that we were able to get in the same day. So God started blessing. Now we're in the house. You ready to go to the house now? Yeah, I want to say this one thing. Real okay. quick. And, and so my wife just saw some, said something that's triggered something in my mind. If you know you qualify for Romans 8 and 28, and then you start going through things, it's because God knows that you're ready now. 
just to tell yourself that if I'm going through this, I'm beginning to lose stuff. I want you as a wife and look at your husband right now, look at me and say, hey, we must be ready for this. Um, if we, we know we haven't done anything wrong, but all hell is breaking loose in our life, God know that we're ready to become butterflies. That's the good part. That is the comforting part. He wouldn't have put you here if he wasn't ready. Go ahead. Right. So now we're in this house and I felt like the house was I'm sorry. Go so ahead. we left, left the $600 house note. We couldn't hit a card note. We couldn't. We, we was like literally here behind in this house that I'm pulling into. The mm -hmm. payment is, is it 15 or 18? 18. Eighteen hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. so over three times more than my last rent. But I know God told us to come here and mm -hmm. listen. Well, you know, God said it because both of y'all in agreement. I feel like I'm talking right. to a couple right now, baby. Yeah, I love it. I love it. The husband is believing and the wife is believing because you don't walk in something like that with one of y'all because when you lose it, you're gonna be the problem. Right. Both of us believe, believe that all the everything lined up. This is perfect. So we move into a nice home. Yeah. We're, we're renting. We own yeah. the We're renting this home. Yeah. I want we're, to we're, now we're in this home, and let's fast forward. We never missed a payment. Never. God provided. We yeah. al we always had more than enough. Yep. It's like when you when we obeyed God and did what God said to do, God provided in this house. So we're there. Uh, what almost six years? That's seven. A long time. We were there a long time. So my baby got ready to graduate, and uh, she's getting ready to graduate. But uh, I never forget we sitting at the house 2018. By this time, well, this, uh, get them dates in here. So 2013 when we moved. Yeah, 2013. With all the hell broke loose. 2013 got repositioned. Us. Things kind of calmed down. Yeah, we were doing good. Yeah, About okay. 2000, 2017, stuff started stirring up in the Hold church. Up. Now, listen, okay. when stuff started coming down, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> you would never, I'm going to tell you married couples, I'm going to tell you women, I'm going to tell you men, if 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 God if, if God has started shifting you, it don't stop. Right. He may have left you alone the first 18, 20 years of your life, but if you know him and you know who he is and you know now that God just took you on your first transition, it's going to go forever. And that's a good thing, though, because, I mean, every time he puts you through, he's going to take you to another level. He's going to grow you. He's going to advance you. But you can never get comfortable. He's always going to train you. So we this was a five-year period, right? 13 to, 18, 13 to 18 is five years. Five years. What do you do for five years? Do you get comfortable or do you start preparing for the next transition? Go ahead, baby. I'm yeah. sorry. We got comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> we were not preparing for no transition. And I'll never forget my husband. I had a dream. And then my husband had a dream. You got to go uh, it's on our YouTube page. And I might share the link in here. And you'll hear more about that transition of that. But some stuff went on in our ministry. And people started leaving. Left and right. Like, and we're sitting up here like, oh my God, did we do something? Did something happen? Da, 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 da. Like fast forward through that. And I think it was about 30 people within a year that ended up leaving the ministry and they were leaving like flies. But God showed me a dream of us uh, in a tornado. And I was, I was standing in a tornado and I saw big old uh, what couches and all this stuff over my head. But I was in the eye of the tornado. Then you had a dream. Yep. And in your dream, we were holding on, but we were in a tornado as well. Yep. Then God showed you we were sitting with a couple and at the church. And while we were sitting, they were our le leaders of the church. And uh, God showed you uh, a fire coming through the church. So yep. all of a sudden, when God showed us that, it started happening like crazy. So now, you know, you experience the pain and the hurt of pastors and leaders and going through that. And while... Why, why she's saying that is that as you go through these things, and even though we're we're on this kick, Romans 8 and 28, everything works together for your good. Even though everything works together for your good, it doesn't mean that you wasn't the cause. Who you was may cause what you're going through. Bad so you know, avoid. So we did do some things that we did. We was poor leaders in a sense in some areas. And even though we had grew and became better in this moment, we couldn't escape what our past was and we basically we just we didn't do anything to hurt anybody intentionally but we we uh we we we, we gave 
too much of uh, uh we gave we we was we wasn't good stewards to the point to where we let people move on their own. We was over encouraging, over position, over we were learn we were learning pastors. We were new at this. It was fresh to us and we were learning as we as we went and we did. We made mistakes. Uh it wasn't and I want to make this clear to every person that's listening. It wasn't nobody cheating on nobody. That's not what it was. It wasn't us stealing money or taking money from the church. It was just some poor decisions that we made. Uh, hold on to people and, and trying to keep them and trying to, you know, we just we just did too much trying to um with, with this long story short, we just was trying to make sure that people were ready when they made or just it's kind of hard to even say it. <laughs> so, I'm a, I would say this, uh Bishop would have told us this, you know, we had people on our heart. Yeah. And we had to learn to get people off our heart. And when you have people on your heart, you make mistakes. And the only way, person that will really understand it is pastor. So to get off of that, we went through that moment. And here we are, 2018. And we are, you know, learning how to go through the process of healing as yeah. pastors. And we're trying to find our way. We're learning as we go. We're learning through the pain, through the tears, through the hurt, through the naysayers, through the whatever. And we're learning through that. And so we started getting closer to our family. And our family became closer. That experience brought our girls closer. Because go we, ahead. That was, that's key point there because we, was, we got so caught up in our journey of life that we was focused so much on the goal that yeah. we started abandoning our our gifts that God gave us, our family, yeah. our children. and we and, and literally, I remember saying sometimes I don't need family. All I need is a church because this. Or some people may say I don't need family. All I need is my business. I don't need family. All I need is my money. Yeah, and God take it away. All you have is family. Mm -hmm. and when we lost everything, and all we could grab onto was mom. All we could grab onto was dad. All we could yeah. grab onto was children, and so once again, it was necessary. Um, God does never does not ever want you to get to a point in life to where you don't need nobody. Right. And we have to learn it the hard way. We lost everything. And all we had was those very things that, that brought us this far. Yeah. And when we say everything, we mean we lost people that we didn't expect to lose within the ministry. And so that would make you, you know, God still, we had our children, we had our family and God had to bring our focus to it. And I appreciate God for that because it brought our family together. So now you got to say 2018 sitting in front of my dad and my dad like, Hey, y'all ought to, uh, why don't y'all move? No, you said it. No, I'm riding and got my daughter's about to graduate and in a house. This comfortable again. Well, I do God keep taking us out of our comfort zone. We didn't realize that we became a caterpillar again. And that's my said. But anyways, I'm sitting in this house and my daughter's about to graduate and I'm realizing I'm renting. And my child is about to go to college and she literally don't know where her home is going to be. And I was sitting at the house. I'm like, man, my child don't know where her home is going to be. She's going to have to be forced to hurry up and get established just so she can overcompensate for our inadequacies. We didn't have a home for her. You know, I was driving home, um, and and I went past a little spot of property. Me and my wife kept looking at, and it belonged to my father-in-law. And I said, "Man, we kept looking at it jokingly." I said, "Man, that'd be a good place for a house." Well, this day I drove by and I felt it. I said, "Father, how much would you sell me an acre of property for?" He said, uh, "Oh, I would never sell property to my children." Listen, that man of God. <laughs> I would never leave. I never sell a, a, a property to my children. I bought all this to give it to him. He's like, I "Give you an acre." And it just hit. I didn't ask my wife for permission. I just knew this was what we got to do. I said, okay, we're we going to do it. I called her up and said, sweetheart, we're moving to no, point blank. That was a long journey. It wasn't. It was <laughs> yeah, I wasn't in agreement this time. This time around, I was like, no, I will not move to the country. And for those that don't know what point blank is, the name says enough. Okay. So I was just like, that'll be a no. I grew up there. I don't want to go back there. I refuse. But God's plan. <laughs> versus my plan did not work so go ahead. This, we, we we at this point we finally have thanksgiving and we both come to the agreement that it's because of thanksgiving my father-in-law kind of just say hey y'all need, need to go ahead and move down here get out that city pay all that money renting um and all that kind of stuff he says y'all need to get to a point where y'all don't have to do all that and, and so after thanksgiving we both talked about it that year that is time so i made a phone call called the landlord hey man um we want to know, can we get out of our lease a little early? And he's like, at first he was like, no, nah, I'm not. And he's like, okay, no problem. Go ahead. 
Remind you, the lease is up like what three, four months. It was yes. about to be up. Six months, about six months. Yeah. We was getting that um, three months earlier, six months earlier, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he said, uh, "Yeah, I'll let you out." And so we began to look, you know, what we're gonna do because you know we we in our mind we're gonna build a house one day, but we can't build a house. Spending the amount of money we were doing eighteen. No, no, no. Wait, you wanted to build a house. I wanted to move down the street where the house was already ready and the house was already built. I was like, transfer. She wanted to transfer from paying eighteen hundred dollars a month in rent to try to buy a house, but our credit wouldn't get it. (laughs) Our credit wouldn't get it. (laughs) And so, and so, so we realize now for her dream to come true, we got to fix our credit. And we gotta uh, position ourselves because there's no way we're gonna continue paying this this mortgage of eighteen hundred dollars a month and fix our credit. Mm-hmm. For my dream to come true to build our home, we um, we gotta fix our credit and we gotta you know start saving some money some kind of way. And so we realize now the spirit of God is saying clearly, downsize. Our pride was through the roof. We're living in the nicest home we think we ever lived in before. We're, we're um, you know we're doing pretty good, <clears throat> but here we go. God says downsize, and we started looking at. Um, townhouses. We start looking at different things because we want to downsize cutely. We want to. I want to downsize cutely. Yeah, I was going to say that was you. I said I heard God say apartment, yeah. and I was like apartment, Jesus. And and let me stop. I want to say this because I know somebody listening. Like, what do you mean you heard God? I felt in my spirit apartment. I just knew apartment and. Every time I looked around, I'm looking at apartments and a particular apartment, not just any apartment. It was just one apartment complex that God kept leading me to. And I kept wanting to go there. I just had direction to this apartment. Yep. And so we're sitting there and um, I'm thinking, I said, no. And listen, I want to always communicate with you out there and let you know that as you're going through these, I want you to, to acknowledge my thought process, my wife thought process. God's uh, transitions, the turbulence, where we are in these situations. Because I want you to picture yourself. This is, we are, my wife says, I'm you, you are me. Um, listen, we are you, you are us. Um, and, and God does not change rhythms per um, social security number. He don't change rhythm per last name. No, no, no. God has the same rhythm. He does have different stages he put us in. So we're sitting here. I'm like, okay, you know, we, 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 uh, pride is through the roof. We don't want to lose anything. Two cups, two, two things. We don't want to lose anything. Huh? Um, so we want to get this 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 beautiful transition. And we sitting there and I say, baby, no, we want to go to this townhouse and get this cute townhouse. And it just it was it was gonna be this this house, like literally a third the size of our, our home was gonna cost us twelve hundred dollars a month. I'm like, that's not enough. No, was it? No, it was like still fifteen hundred dollars a month. So like yeah. a change. Well, we finally go to this apartment. And we get this apartment complex, and the one my wife saw, and we looked at one apartment complex, one. That's it. We went over there, and, and in the apartment complex, we we sitting over there, and, and the lady say, uh, "Yeah, y'all can get it." I think we was gonna pay twelve hundred dollars a month now, so now we're saving about six hundred dollars. So six hundred dollars gonna be good because now we can use six hundred dollars to make some major changes. Mm-hmm. And uh, we head home, and we change our mind. We signed a contract. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we told her, you told her, she said, okay, we could do a two-year contract. And you said, no, we're going to only be here for a year. We're not going to be here for no two years. I, I, I said, we, we built, we're building a house. Like, like we were starting construction that day. I said, because we, we're building a house and we're going we're gonna to be moving. And there. I'm still looking at you like, we are not building. We are going down the road and we're going to rent again. We're going to go rent that house. And I had already had the house in mind of what we were going to rent. And that was just not the case. Listen, we are going to come back. We're going to stop it here, but we're going to come back and continue the conversation. Part two, it's going to drop really, really soon. Stay tuned. Make sure you like, share, leave a comment, all of that great stuff. But we're going to come back, my honey and I, and talk about from turbulence to trusting God's plan. I hope you've enjoyed the journey this far, but you do not want to miss part two. That's going to drop really, really soon. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.